Welcome to the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship post-game press conference featuring Oregon. We'll hear from head coach Kelly Graves first, followed by a select student athlete. We'll now begin with an opening statement from head coach Kelly Graves and then go to questions. Coach. Well, first of all, I just want to congratulate Louisville. They, uh, you know, Coach Walls had them ready and, um, you know, they, they deserved it tonight. They just played harder than us. They were a lot more aggressive. They got us on our heels early and we just couldn't quite recover and uh, you know we made a, an effort and, got, and cut it I think to six or eight at some point later in the third quarter early fourth and then uh, you know they went on a run that uh, we just couldn't recover from uh, we didn't play our best um, didn't have all you know really all the pieces that we needed uh, but again I don't want to take anything away from Louisville they they, they deserve to move on. That being said, I'm really proud of my team. I don't think uh, a month ago many people thought we would be here. Uh, we were the youngest team in the field. And, uh, and I think just, uh, you know, I, I think we have a championship makeup with the players that we have. Uh, we just weren't, you know, um, good enough in this tournament to, uh, to continue on. But I think just the, the fact that we were able to play three games, win a couple in this tournament, I think will do us well in the future. Um, two people I really just want to congratulate and, and let them know how much that I love them and, and appreciate them. Uh, Aaron Bowley and Lydia Giomi played their last games, uh, you know, in a duck uniform. Uh, but those two have been very special. And um, they've left a legacy of, of success. And, and quite frankly, um, they, they set an example to all of our young kids as to what you're supposed to be uh, when you're a student athlete, how you're supposed to act, how you're supposed to go about your business. They're not just great athletes and good basketball players. We, you know, that's obviously obvious. We've seen them do that on the court, but off the court, you're talking about two leaders in our uh, university community, and uh, and two people that are, you know, going to make this world better. They're they're the type of people that the world needs most, quite frankly, right now, with all the issues that that we have. So I, I'm really proud of them. Um, and like I told them, you know, the worst season they ever had in a, in a duck uniform was Sweet 16. I mean, think about that. I went to a couple of Elite Eights, went to a Final Four, and now a Sweet 16. That's quite a legacy to leave. So I'm really proud of them, and I just want them to know how much I appreciate and love them. We'll open it up to questions. Use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. We'll go to Doug Feinberg, AP. Hey, Kelly, congrats on a great season. Thank you. Not, I know you don't make excuses for things, but obviously when Maddie went down, that affected your defense, I'm guessing, against Dana. And when Sabali went down, you were guys were making a run and not having her makes a difference. So just how much does that hurt you guys not having those two players to sort of have a chance tonight, so to speak? Well, Doug, at this point in the tournament, you want every player that you can have available. And obviously, Maddie has had a tremendous tournament. I, I can't give her more praise. When Tahina Pow Pow went down, people forget our point guard was first team all Pac-12, one of the best point guards in the country. And uh, we were without her in this tournament. But I thought Maddie filled in and did a great job. And that, that obviously hurt. Uh, and then Niara was having a great second half. I thought she came out with new commit. And they were, you know, and we were finally able to get her the basketball. And then when she went down, uh, I don't know the extent of her injuries. That did not look good. And um, that, that, that's going to be a tough one. Um, yeah, that just makes it difficult. But again, hey, you can't make excuses. You, you play with who you have. And uh, we just, uh, like I said, didn't have enough. But I, I wish them the best. I, I want a speedy recovery by both. And it's too bad we didn't have them. We'll go to Ryan Thorburn. Kelly, um, I'm just wondering, you know, you mentioned Pow Pow, obviously Sheer played well in this tournament. What do, you, what do you want them to take away from this experience going into next year? And compounding on that, you guys might actually have a, a real off season, hopefully, you know, leading into next season. What can this group take from this going into next year? We, I know we can take it a, a step or two or even more further. I truly do. I, I think this is – we've got a championship makeup. And I, I think I know a little bit about that. Never have won one, but certainly have been in a position to. Uh, I, I really like the group that we have coming back. I, and, and you're right. This was the absolute worst season to be young. 
Uh, when you consider Sedona and Niara, they're not technically freshmen, but this was their first year of basketball. Actually, they were, they were behind the freshmen even. I mean, they hadn't played in two years. That, that's, that's difficult. Uh, and then five true freshmen, two other newcomers, nine new people on this basketball team. And, um, you know, with very little opportunity. And, Ryan, you're from Oregon, so you know how little we got to – you know, they, I, I hear these coaches belly aching. They didn't get to work with their kids in July. Well, we didn't really start until October uh, in anything meaningful. So, uh, yeah, I, I applaud them. Man, I am so proud of my team. Um, this was, like I said, a tough year. It's a tough year for everybody, but when you're young, it was even worse. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that we made it this far. I think we can use this as a springboard. We'll go to Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Hey, Kelly, Nancy Armour from USA Today. Um, congrats on the season. I, I know that this is, you know, maybe a little bit weird to look at, look at this now, but um, when you look at the influence and the, the impact that Sedona and you all had on this tournament, what kind of consolation do you take from that? The fact that, you know, you're making people pay attention to things that they wouldn't have been doing a month ago. Couldn't be more proud of the young lady. I, I, just Sedona is a, a marvel. I'm so inspired each and every day by her. I'm, I'm glad that she stood up and, uh, and, you know, she's quite frankly, she has made change and, uh, and that's super, super powerful. On top of that, you guys, I know tonight wasn't her best game. She had a really good tournament. Uh, you know, I think she's put herself into a position now uh, to have not just a real voice, but to be able to back it up as one of the best basketball players in the country. Um, and, and I think that's, as, that's an, as, as important as what they're doing on the basketball court, you guys. The lessons, I mean, we want to win every game. We do. Uh, but what we're trying to do is build uh, strong young women who have a voice and, uh, you know, and, and feel empowered. And I think that's what we're doing at the University of Oregon. And it's not just Sedona. It's her teammates, too. Um, but just think of the group that, that we have coming back when you start with Tahina Pow Pow and, and Niara Sabali and, and Sedona Prince and Taylor Mike Sell. Look, I mean, you just the list goes on and on. I could have mentioned all 10 or 11 players that we have back. This is going to be a really good group. This group isn't going away. And we're only going to get better. And now that we have an opportunity to work with each other, actually, uh, I, I think you're going to see huge growth. And this is a team that, uh, you know, I, I'll be shocked and really disappointed if we don't not only get to this point next year, but even beyond. Go to Eric Scopel, 24-7 Sports. Coach, I want to ask you about the response to, to both injuries. Obviously, you guys had a really tough second quarter, but a big third quarter to respond. What was working during that period? And then the way you guys responded after Niara left, I know they ended up ballooning it again, but you got it down to six. Pleased with both those and kind of what worked and, and when you kind of had to figure things out on the fly like that? Well, I thought, you know, we stopped turning the ball over. That helped early. We got the ball inside. Sedona and Niara both got pretty good looks inside. We didn't shoot the ball very well from the three tonight, and I thought we had some pretty good looks at times. Not a ton. And, and again, credit that defense. They, they sped us up. You know, we knew they were going to try to, and they did. And we uh, it took, you know, two quarters to kind of settle down. Um, but uh, I just thought we, we relaxed a little bit more in that third quarter and, and got back into it. And it was just a play or two here or there that could have gotten us over the hump. We just could never get it over the hump. And we felt like we were playing uphill the entire time. Uh, then the loss to Niara, you know, that kind of kicks you in the gut a little bit. And, uh, and we didn't respond well, just like we didn't respond well to Maddie's early. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to learn from it and, and move on. Go to AJ McCord, K-O-I-N. Hey, Kelly. So one of the things we talked about, I know you said they came out, you came on your, on your heels a little bit, or they got you on your, their heels a little bit early, but you guys did fight back. And that's one of the things that we talked about last week was just as long as there was fight, as long as you didn't get outworked, that's what you wanted to see. And so when you think back on this tournament and how hard they did fight to get to this point, what are you going to remember most about, about that element of this tournament? 
nothing but positives and love for my team. I, I'm so proud of them. We did work hard. I thought we outplayed and outworked our first two opponents, and at times we, we outworked Louisville tonight. We just didn't do it for 40 minutes. And, uh, and I got to give Dana Evans a lot of credit. I mean, she was really good tonight. She was all – Every bit the All-American that uh, you know that she was for most of the year. I know she struggled in this tournament and kind of late in the season, but uh, we 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 got her fixed. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, you know, now they're going to run into uh, an elite team next round, as we well know. Uh, Stanford is playing as well as anybody, but. AJ, I, I, again, I can't say how uh, proud I am of my team. I mean, seriously, look how young this group is and look how far we got. There were a lot of teams. There's 350-some-odd Division I teams. We made it to the final 16. And, um, and like I said, we're going to use this as a springboard and we're going to build on it. We'll go to Orlando Sanchez, KGW-TV. Coach, congratulations on, on a successful season again. Uh, a, a similar question, though, but what is your message to the team as you, you talk to them as their season comes to an end here? Well, just basically what I've told you, I, you know, let them know that we love them. We appreciate all their efforts this year. Uh, I think we've been the model program at the University of Oregon and elsewhere in how to deal with the pandemic. I, I think our, our kids have been so resilient. Uh, they've been diligent. They took this thing seriously. Uh, we did have one pause. It cost us one weekend. That's it. And, um, you know, I, I, I just thought they did the best they could. And, and like I said, with a young team, that was difficult for them. But, I, I, again, I'm so proud of them for their efforts on the court and off the court. And um, we're looking forward now. But a Jerry Thompson, Ducks Illustrated. Jerry, you're on mute. Got it now? Yes. Okay, Coach. Uh, it just seems like Louisville outshot you the bottom line. I mean, you know, a lot of shots you couldn't finish at the hoop, you know, drives and, and the three-pointers. I mean, is that some consolation? You just, just didn't shoot as well as they did. I thought early in the game, Jerry, I thought we had some pretty good looks. We had, you know, the right – three-point shooters shooting pretty good shots there. Like you said, we just didn't finish around the rim very well early. A few of those go in, maybe it's a different game, you know, and then you're maybe not battling uphill. Maybe it's basket for basket, but uh, we didn't get off to the start that we'd gotten uh, the last two games in this tournament, and, and that kind of hurt us. Final question, we'll go to Eric Scopel. Coach, you, you mentioned the optimism for this group and, and kind of what this tournament experience. I, I just wonder, playing in these games against these caliber of teams with these big of moments, just how much that can impact a team. I know you guys had a lot this year early, but the tournament's a little different animal. And to get this far, I mean, how much can this kind of lead you guys to the offseason? Um, because a couple of weeks ago, we thought maybe it was going to be a, a disappointing end to the season, and obviously it's not now. Exactly. I, I'm going to remember, you know, great season. It's how you finish. We, we got to the Sweet 16, you guys. I mean, it's incredible, uh, especially given how we played toward the end of the year. So, uh, listen, positives. It, it feels bad right now, and it should, because, and, and it feels bad because it's important to us. Uh, but, you know, we're going to forget the score tonight. We're going to forget that maybe we weren't at our best. And what we're going to remember is a, a really great run. And again, I couldn't be more proud of this group. I'm happy for them. I love each and every one of them. They've had tremendous attitudes all year, a really strong work ethic. They've really built a chemistry and a camaraderie uh, that has been difficult under the circumstances. And um, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to remember only positive things. There, there's no question about it. Now, we got to get better. Okay, we got to get healthier, which means I think we got to get stronger. We got to put in the work on the court and off the court. Uh, but right now, for the next few weeks, uh, I think our school starts tomorrow, spring quarter. They need to get back into the books and uh, and 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 get that part of their life back in order, so that then we, uh, in a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, really get started on uh, you know 
con and not just conditioning, but skill development and, and really all the things that, uh, that, that we need to improve on. So I, I'm really excited about the future of Duck basketball. I think about it, you guys, in the last five seasons, this is what we've done, okay? Elite Eight, Elite Eight, Final Four. 2020, who knows? I still think we were the best team and had a chance to win it all. And then this year, the Sweet 16. If that's not an elite basketball program, uh, I'm not sure what is, you know? And uh, until we, I guess, cut down those final nets, um, you know, there's, there's always something out there that we're chasing. But again, what a great season, and that's what I'm going to remember. Now, I'm going to head to Indianapolis and, and root on my son's team. And uh, we didn't win the national championship. Maybe they will. Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. We'll be joined momentarily by student athlete Aaron Bowley. We're now joined by Aaron Boley. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. We'll go to Rob Mosley. Hey, boy, just wondering about um, how you felt about the, the, uh, the fight to get into rhythm offensively uh, tonight and what, what that experience was like. Also wondering if you, if, if you could address Maddie's injury and just is there one end of the court you felt like you missed her more on? Um, yeah, I, we did. Like Coach said, we missed some easy shots around the basket and we missed some wide open threes to start the game. And um, that got us, you know, really let them get a lead on us there that we were kind of trying to climb uphill the rest of the game. But, um, yeah, not having Maddie <laughs> hurts us a lot when it comes to ball handlers. We've had all three of our primary ball handlers injured at some point this year. So, um, that definitely hurts us a lot, especially against a team like Louisville, who's, um, you know, all pressure and, you know, full court man the whole game, you know, with, with that kind of pressure, it definitely hurts us a little bit. And we struggled with that, um, especially early. Go to Ryan Thorburn. Aaron, I don't know if you could hear Kelly speaking about kind of the future of the program, but you know, obviously he's really excited with everything they've got coming back. What will that mean to you to have kind of guided all these freshmen and new players into the future during this pandemic, which you've obviously had <laughs> your share of struggles getting through? Yeah, um, you know, I that's all I could have hoped for this year, um, really. Um, I think Lydia and I both, um, that's all we could have really hoped for was to leave um, behind something, you know, to, you know, show some kind of leadership or, you know, lead by an example that um, it kind of paves a path for them to be successful in the future. Um, you know, they're all really, really talented and um, it's going to be a great group. And like KG said, their, their future is really bright. Um, so um, I hope that we were able to um, help them somewhat <laughs> in their journey. Um, yeah. Aaron, you look at all the adversity from this season between postponed games and, and everything along those lines. What does it say about this group that allowed you guys to persevere and, and make it to the Sweet 16? Um, it says a lot about this group. It says a lot about the character of these girls. Um, I'm really proud of all of them um, for sticking together. And we've had a lot of adversity and a lot of challenges um, that we've had to get through together. Um, and just for us to be able to stick together and to not, uh, you know, separate or um, get down on ourselves after the, um, you know, into the season that we had, I think to be able to end the Pac-12 tournament the way that we did and to just, you know, pick ourselves up, stick together, um, you know, turn it around and come back out here and um, play a couple really good games uh, in the tournament out here is 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 awesome and I couldn't have asked for anything more and um, I'm super proud of the girls for that. Um, it says a lot about each and every one of them, and um, they're going to have a really bright future at Oregon because of it. We'll go back to Rob Mosley. 
maybe he just answered this question, but, but coach was coach said a couple of times, he made a point. He's saying he thinks his team has a championship makeup. What is he seeing? You know, what, what does he see that makes him say that from your perspective? Yeah. Um, it's a few things, you know, I think it's um, a lot of it has to do with the fight that is in us. You know, we didn't show it at um, all of the time this year, but a few times, you know, we showed that as a unit, we had, we had a lot of fight in us. Um, and it takes a group that, you know, wants to be a unit and that wants to work together and that wants to play hard for each other. Um, it takes a really special group of people um, to really lean on each other and create that championship atmosphere. Um, and we definitely have the girls um, that, you know, have that potential. So, um, yeah, I'm really proud of um, the fight that we showed coming into this tournament especially. I think that really shows that um, we've got some fighters here and that um, they could be a championship team in the future. Go back to Ryan Thorburn. Yeah, speaking of, of fighting, obviously, despite losing Maddie and losing Niara, you guys cut it to six there in the fourth quarter and had about three or four good looks at making it even tighter than that. Um, how close do you guys, how close do you think you were to, to flipping it on them and then obviously got away from there? Yeah, we were, we were close. Um, it did feel like an uphill battle. We were um, really trying hard to just get stops and then make something happen offensively. And we couldn't just put the two together um, enough to, to close that gap. Um, but we did, you know, it did feel like we had a fighting chance there um, a, a few times, especially at the end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth. But, um, yeah, I can credit to Louisville for playing a great game and um, for never letting up at that point. Um, they went on a couple runs there, and we just – um, it just got to the point where we couldn't close that gap. Aaron, thank you for your time today. Thank you. That's it for this post-game news conference. A recording of it will be posted on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com. Thanks for joining us.